my name is Serge Amélie. I'm a French photographer living in Paris. I've been a professional photographer for seven years now, and I specialize in landscape photography. As I'm living in Paris, I do a lot of Paris landscapes because it's a beautiful city. You can see some of the shots here while I'm talking. And uh, I have a, I've done a lot of HDR shots of Paris, and uh, lately I got a bit tired of the HDR, so now I'm doing a lot less HDR shots. Uh, I've also been to other places, uh, like Venice in Italy recently, a couple of weeks ago. A beautiful city where I did a lot of shots there. I've been also to Las Vegas and a bit uh, to Los Angeles. And uh, basically I love doing landscape photography. I um, do uh, sell fine prints in galleries and also sell my photos to brands. But this is a free postcard that I'm starting. I'm going to try to publish a postcard every Monday. And, uh, in that podcast, I will mainly give you one tip uh, that I've learned over the years, either on photography, or on Lightroom, or on Photoshop. So this is what the whole podcast is about. Now, uh, the first tip I want to give you is about shooting landscape photography and about the quality of the light. When I started photography about seven years ago, I remember I took my DSLR and went in Paris at night and you know, waited for the sunset to finish and did a night shots, you know, from like, uh, I think it was in winter, from 8 p.m. to like 1 o'clock in the morning. And I kind of liked the shots and I started showing my photos around to other professionals and they kept telling me, you should have shot at the golden hour. I said, but what the hell is the golden hour? And they explained me that the golden hour is, is, is about half an hour long, it's basically between the start and the end of the sunset. Usually the sky gets pretty much blue. You see I have a lot of details uh, from the city because it's, you know, it's not too contrasted, it's not too dark yet. And it's a good time to shoot. So I went on a roll on the golden hour and started doing lots and lots of golden hour shoots. So all my shoots kind of looked blue and it was kind of interesting. And then I realized that the light is actually pretty interesting about starting an hour to an hour and a half before the golden hour. And that actually I had a time frame starting about one hour to one half hour before the start of the sunset to the end of the sunset. So it gives you about two hours per day where the light is really interesting. Now photography means writing with the light. So better is your light, better is your photos. Now I've, I have a little app I want to show you which is called PhotoCalc. It's cost I think $2.99 on the Apple Store. And uh, it's on the iPhone and on the iPad. And the way it works is basically, it gives you uh, every day uh, what time the sunset is starting. For example, today it's at 9.56 p.m. And at what time the sunset is finishing, which is today at 10.35 p.m. So I look on PhotoCalc and I see that, uh, you know, the sunset is from blood time to blood time. But the thing is, the light is really interesting, actually way before the sunset. About one hour to one half hour, the sun starts coming down. The shadow starts to be very long, uh, you know, the whole sky can become very orange and that happens usually before the sunset. Well, in short, you know, you really have one hour to two hours before sunset. So again, I look up the application and I know, you know, that I have from this time, you know, so let's say the sunset is at 10, I will shoot, I will start shooting from 8 o'clock, uh, 8 p.m. to after the sunset. Now, um, the, the tutorial I'm going to show you is really about that. It's shooting before the sunset. The sun is coming down right into your camera. So sometimes what happens when the sun is coming down, if you have got a bit of clouds over it, the whole sky becomes orange. And when you shoot into uh, the sun, I will show you in the video, one thing which is good is to do a little exposure compensation, to go minus one on your exposure compensation so that because as the sun is into the camera, if you do a proper exposure, you, your sky is going to be totally blown out. But I'll show you that in the video. But what happens is when you shoot into the, the sun, really straight into the sun, and uh, you can have this really orange type of atmosphere and it can look very good. But if your white balance is on auto white balance, you probably won't get it, so you have to correct it in Lightroom. But you will see in this tutorial what I mean, it's very visual, but it's, it can create really powerful images, this technique I show you. So basically you don't even need a tripod when you do this type of shoot, and I don't think I use the tripod. All you need to do is you shoot into the sun, the sun is coming down, you know, find some nice subject, 
and you get a photo like the one we, got, we are about to retouch and I think they can make really nice photos. So let's get on to the tutorial and after the tutorial I will uh, finish this podcast. All right, so here is the tip for this week. This is a photo taken in Venice, Italy, and um, I put the metadata up there, so you can see I shot this at one two hundredth of a second at f9. Now, and ISO 100, there was a, the sun was coming straight into the camera, and the reason I shot this as one two hundred and second and f9 is that I was trying to get a high speed because you see there is boats coming, so I wanted to freeze the action uh, so one two hundredth of a second seemed to be fast enough and um, F9 I have this pole here right in front of me so I needed a big depth of field so that everything was in focus if I would have gone to F10, F11 or F12 I would have a, a slower shutter speed or I would have to increase my ISO and which is something I don't like why I don't like to increase the ISO because this is a very constructive scene if you look at it the Sun is right into the camera is really uh, you know very present here so this is very uh, almost looks like it's burned and this is very dark so you know it's backlit we are right into the Sun and so I needed to um, do a little exposure compensation basically I shot this a little darker than I should than what the, the camera gave me as settings because I wanted to do what I'm going to show you now uh, which is a technique of shooting into the sun. Basically what you do is you go a bit dark, you know, you, you underexpose a bit the photo. And even with underexposing the photo, look how bright the sky is. So let me show you the retouching. So I'm gonna right click and do a virtual copy. Okay, now I have a virtual copy so I can show you really the before and after. I'm in the develop module and here I go. So I'm going to take my highlights and bring it down the whole way down to minus 100. So we start seeing the sun and then I'm going to bring up the shadows uh, completely. So now we see what's going on in the shadows. And you see, if, I, if my ISO would be over 100, like 200, 300, because it is underexposed, I would have quite some noise in the shadows and I don't want that. That is why I should I choose F9 because that was the maximum uh, aperture I could have without boosting the ISO. Next is we're going to change. Maybe I'm not going to boost up the shadows that much for now. Uh, next, we are going to change completely the white balance. The reason is when the sun is coming down straight into your camera, generally the sky is very yellow, which was kind of the case, but I was on automatic white balance. And so it did a pretty blue white balance, which was not the feeling I had. So let's boost the temperatures the whole way to the right to make this whole thing yellow. Uh, that looked more what I saw at the time and let's add a little bit of magenta to add a bit of red Okay, now we're getting there. This is a bit more the atmosphere I was going for See how we got all these details back with Lightroom 4 because I shot row and I underexposed a little bit It's quite amazing. Let's go further and let's get some more of this guy with adding a neutral density filter um, I'm gonna go for exposure. I'm gonna minus the exposure about one stop and I'm gonna make the ND filter just on the uh, on the sky here uh, it's maybe a bit strong so I'm gonna back it down to about half a stop okay so, but now the sky is better I'm gonna boost the contrast just in the sky and I'm gonna boost a bit of saturation maybe in the sky oh no not not the saturation because I'm gonna do an overall saturation later on but I'm gonna boost the clarity a little bit so we see more what's happening in the sky now what a change you see before after okay now I'm gonna press the alt key and I'm gonna do my whites and blacks so pressing down the alt key or option key on the Mac I'm going right with the whites until I see some whites a lot of white pixel which means here this is a Sun you can see here the the, the, the white circle so I'm gonna back it down a little bit but that's what happens when you press alt the whole picture goes black and then you can go to the right until you see some pixels and you know you have reached what we call a white point. Then let's do the same thing with the blacks. I'm going to take my blacks, hold on the Alt key, go left until I see some pixels. OK, and and drop it. OK, now we have a lot more better contrast. And all I'm going to do now is boost up a bit the contrast 
and maybe add a slightly bit of exposure and uh, let me press I to take out the metadata okay now this is the look I was going for you see how we went from this which is the original photo to this which is uh, much more what I had at the time now let's just continue a little bit and let's just add some highlights post cropping uh, maybe not that much uh, something like minus nine or something just a little bit you know to darken a bit the uh, you know the outside of the photo and um, let's do uh, some lens correction profile I'm gonna enable the profile correction which is like an automatic thing okay maybe when I do that it takes out some of the vignetting so I'm gonna add some more vignetting all right Okay, and one last thing, I'm just going to go into camera calibration to look how the uh, camera landscape calibration would look on that photo. I think it's going to be too much. No, I don't like it. It's too red. So I'm going to go back to uh, uh, standard, Adobe standard. Okay, so that's it. That's basically the tip, you know, and uh, it's quite a change. And I love this kind of photo. You know, when the sun starts getting down, it's not quite sunset yet, but it gets all yellow in the sky. And the trick is you shoot into the sun, you're underexposed, you know, with a, with a very low ISO, like 100 on Canon or 200 on Nikon. And then you do this magic in Lightroom and there you are. I show you again the before and after. That's the before. And that's the after. Okay, I kind of like that. So that was the tip of the week, guys. I uh, hope you take some great photos and I'll see you soon. All right, just before we finish off this podcast, I just wanted to show you my website. This is my website. It's called photosearch.com with only one S, photosearch.com. And when you're on the website, if you click on the App Store, this is where you get all my training. If you want to get more of this type of training, I have basically, uh, I think it's about eight or no, nine different courses, mostly on uh, Photoshop or HDR or Lightroom. For example, you have uh, this is the photo. This was a this tip I gave you was a, a little part of this series called the uh, Light for Travel Photography. It's uh, a bit over one hour course with six different projects where I show you from start to the end how I retouched it. You have got uh, you know if you're just starting with Photoshop or Photoshop C6, you've got a whole course which is about two hours. Photoshop C6 Quick Start, Lightroom for Quick Start, Lightroom for retouching, doing compositing. And you can see a little video that will show you all the before and after uh, on each application to see which one you like the most. And you can either purchase them on the App Store if you have an iPhone or an iPad, or you can directly purchase them and download them on any PC or Mac. And you get directly the HD videos and the source files directly on your PC or your Mac. So it's whatever you like the most. Uh, each course is $6, which is very cheap because I give you all the raw files that go with it and it's usually about two hours course and it took me really months and months and months to master these techniques so it's uh it's pretty cheap but uh i have some very good reviews on it apparently people really like it and i invite you to check them out uh, you can on my website uh, if you go on my blog for example you can also get a link to uh, my twitter uh, my google plus or my YouTube channel and uh, so you can uh, follow me along and uh, and see uh, other courses or podcasts from me and uh, okay so back to the studio where we finish off thank you for following my first podcast before we leave I like to give you a link to a photographer that inspires me a lot of photographer out there which are really incredible and every week I will present you a, a photographer that has been a personal inspiration to me uh, this one I'm going to show you is uh, named Jean-Michel Bertz. He's uh, an, uh, an Argentic photographer. Basically, he has a camera from 1959 and he does incredible black and white of all the cities in the world. He does huge fine prints, uh, like, you know, six feet large uh, fine prints that you can buy for a lot of money. He sells tons of them. He's an amazing guy. I really love his style. So that was my inspiration for the day. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to my videos or buying my apps. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next week for another podcast. Goodbye.